Welcome to our online sermon. Thanks for joining us. We pray that you and your family at this time are well, uh, mentally, physically, and spiritually. We know that at this time, more than ever, uh, it's a necessity for us to be connected. And so you can join one of our connect groups. They're meeting online. And so for prayer, for Bible study, even games and uh, fellowship and encouraging one another. And so underneath this video, there is a link. You can tap on that and it can get you through to one of our Connect Group leaders. Also, we would love to hear if you've recently prayed and given your life to Jesus. There's also a link underneath this uh, video. And so let us know. That encourages us the most. I want to say a big thank you to everybody who is sharing this content. This is really exciting for us at uh, Potter's House Wandsworth. We're hearing great testimonies every week of people giving their life to Jesus in their own homes after these messages. And also uh, people saying, once the church comes back together, I wanna come to your church. And so send this out, uh, this message to friends and family, work colleagues, maybe even people that you just, you haven't spoken to in a long time, just send it out to them. Who knows what God can do? We really do believe that if we get the word out and people hear uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ, it will impact their life. Um, I want to encourage us to stay faithful in our giving. Everything we do, we do out of faithfulness. And so we really do appreciate people, uh, the faithful members of Potter's House Wandsworth who are faithfully uh, giving. And uh, all of the ministry commitments we have, we still have them. And so it's your faithful giving. We understand that the Bible says that God uh, loves a cheerful giver and that God rewards us based upon our giving. And he speaks about if we're uh, generous givers, that God blesses us. And if we are uh, not, it affects us. And so at this time, and there's so many things going on, let's stay faithful in our giving and believe in God. I'm hearing testimony after testimony of everything that God's doing. And so thank you for your faithful giving. Without you, we cannot do what we're doing and get the word of God out. I pray last thing is that this message encourages you, refreshes you and brings you closer to God. Amen. Hi, Potter's House Wandsworth. Welcome you out to our online sermon series. We're going through uh, the 23rd Psalm, The Lord is My Shepherd. Uh, a very famous, should I say, very common. Everybody knows it, but we're, we're going over familiar ground, but we're trying to find deeper truth in it. And so I want to leap straight in today. We're going to uh, go back over um, verse 1 and 2. And so follow along as I dive straight in. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Let's just pray before we go into the word. Father, we just ask you right now for your grace, your mercy. I pray, Father, that you would enable us to bring out deeper truths from your word. I pray that it would edify us. I pray that it would strengthen us. I pray, Heavenly Father, that uh, we would be led by you. That's what we really want out of this series, that you will become more and more our shepherd. We ask you this in Jesus' name. And we say amen. And at home, say amen with me. And so um, we spoke about the first, series, the first sermon in the series. We spoke about the Lord being our shepherd. And what that means is that he leads us. And then we spoke about uh, last week is that he makes me lie down in green pastures. And so we spoke about where he can make us and give us rest. This week, what I really want to, what I really want to go into is that he leads me beside still waters. And so what this tells me where he says, when he speaks about still waters, is that when Jesus is my shepherd, he leads me to a place which will fulfill my deepest need. This is really what I get from this because he's speaking of still waters and water is one of our most basic needs. It's one of our necessities of life. You can uh, go a lot longer without food. I know some of you love your food, but you can go a lot longer without food than you can without water. Water is one of the things that we, we desperately need and we will not live long without water. We're made up, they say, of 70% water. And so when the psalmist is saying that God, when he's my shepherd, he's gonna lead me beside still waters. He's saying that as I follow Jesus and as I make Jesus my Lord, he is gonna lead me to a place where he's gonna fulfill my uh, uh, deepest needs. And so, when I think about this, I remember uh, a while ago when I, uh, I went to the Tucson conference. And so 
in Tucson, it's a, uh, it's a desert land. And so um, it's very hot, extremely hot, high temperatures. You cannot be outside for a long period of time. And so because it's desert, what that means is, is that you, you do not feel when you sweat. So you could be just out there and you don't feel that you're sweating, but you are. You're losing moisture uh, because it evaporates quick. And so uh, when one of the pastors was doing the announcements, the sermon is finished and he's announcing, come back tonight and you can buy the sermons and all of these things as they usually do in the conference. Um, what happened was, is that he made an announcement. And what he said was, is that don't forget to, uh, to drink. Uh, keep drinking water and he explained because in the conference you've got people from all around the world that do not they're not used to living in a, a desert climate and so um, what he was telling them is that if you wait until you're thirsty you could be already dehydrated and he's saying that is one of the you know late symptoms you could already be dehydrated so he was saying don't wait until you are thirsty uh, keep drinking regular throughout the day when you're out and about because thirst is the, uh, the body telling us you're dehydrated, you, you're, you're, you're becoming dehydrated and that's what thirst is. And so thirst is a, a, one of the first symptoms of being dehydrated when you are thirsty. It's the body telling you, listen, you're lacking fluids, you're lacking water. Some of the other symptoms of dehydration is a, a lack of energy. Uh, confusion, fainting even, if you continue to go on without drinking water. And so dehydration is when you lack what you was made for. The thing that your body needs and the thing that your body was made for, when you are lacking it, this is what dehydration is. And this is why we say that mankind was made by God for God that me and you was made for a relationship with God. This is what we were made for. Uh, we was not made just to earn money and consume things. We was not made for religion. We were made to have relationship with our God. And so many people today, what they have, what they have is a spiritual dehydration, a dehydration of the soul because they lack that relationship with God. They lack their relationship with their maker. And what we find is, is that they're having the symptoms of a dehydration of the soul, just like uh, physical dehydration, lack of energy, meaning that uh, they cannot have the energy or the power to do the right thing. They lack spiritual energy sometimes as Christians. We're lacking that energy to read and pray and get, bring ourselves to fellowship and to church. This is a sign of spiritual soul dehydration, um, confusion. We live in a time when people are confused about so many matters that uh, uh, generations before were very clear about. This wasn't even an issue to be confused about. Now we're confused about these things. Where one time we knew things were clear, we don't anymore. That's a soul dehydration. And uh, like I said, same as physical, fainting. And that you just give up. People are giving up in life. And so the Bible shows us that there is this similarity between quenching of thirst and dehydration and our relationship with God. In Psalms 42 verse 1, the psalmist says, The deer pants for the water brook, so, uh, uh, so pants my soul for you, O God. He said he's looked at the deer and he sees the deer thirsting for water. And he's making an analogy and he's saying, my soul thirsts for God. I need relationship with my maker. In Psalms 84 verse 2, my soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. When he uses that word longs, my soul longs, he's saying, my soul is thirsty. It craves God. He says, yes, even faints. He's saying that the soul dehydration, this spiritual dehydration that I'm experiencing in my life right now is that it's making me faint. I, be I become weak and weary. I desperately need God. And this is uh, why this psalm is so powerful for us because the Bible is promising us that God says, listen, when you make me, uh, uh, when, when God becomes 
our shepherd, when we make him our shepherd, when we follow him, he will lead us beside still waters. He will lead us to a place which will uh, fulfill our deepest need. And so what, what, what I'm speaking about is this dehydration of the soul. See, the reason why things get worse is sometimes we're trying to fix spiritual dehydration of the soul with things that cannot fix it, with other things. Rather than saying, you know what, I, uh, my relationship with God is, is, is wavering and I'm fainting and the symptoms of dehydration, I'm confused, I'm losing energy, I'm fainting. Rather than saying I've got to go to God because this is what I need, sometimes what we do is we try to uh, fix spiritual dehydration with other things. The, 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 the problem is if there's no shepherd, there's no still waters. He's the one that's going to lead me to, beside still waters. And that, that is the, the thing where um, it becomes a compound problem. Now, many of you will understand compound interest, that this is exponential growth. It's almost, uh, it's just adding one upon it. It's just going and going and going and going. The Bible shows us is that sometimes mankind, what he will do is he will, by him trying to fix uh, a, a, a spiritual problem in a, in a wrong manner, he compounds the problem. He makes it worse. Jeremiah 2 verse 13. For my people have committed two evils. That's a compound, two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and hewed themselves cisterns. This is where you, where you keep water, like a reservoir, cistern. Broken cisterns that cannot hold no water. God is saying, he says, my people have done two things. They've got a compound problem here. They've got a, a problem and they've, they've done something and made the problem worse. One is that they've forsaken me. And he calls himself, God identifies himself as the fountain of living water. And he says, and then they've uh, sought other things that cannot, broken cisterns, he calls it, that cannot hold water. So let me give you the analogy of this. This is like... You're living next to a waterfall, a spring of water that's constantly giving you fresh water. You can go there and drink. You have more water than you need, living water. And then you have like a sieve, you know, a container that has loads of holes in it that you use to wash things. It's a sieve. And you go to that well and you fill up the sieve. And because the water's running fast, you feel like, oh, look, it's full. And then you take that sieve and you leave the waterfall and go off with the sieve, thinking that the sieve now is going to fulfill you, is going to keep you. That's what God is saying. He says, you leave me for things which lose water, that cannot hold water. And if we saw somebody doing that, we would say, that is ridiculous. You're compounding the problem of dehydration. See, in the natural, what we understand is this. Not every drink fixes dehydration. Not everything that you can drink that is fluid, that can go down your throat, is actually going to fix dehydration. I read a, uh, an article. It says, in the American Journal of Psychology, urges that high sugar beverages uh, are not rehydrating their drinkers, but are actually dehydrating them. And what he says is, he says that they did a, they're looking at this study of these uh, drinks, these, these Cokes and certain other drinks, these fizzy drinks, and they said, you may be out on a hot day, you're sweating, you, you want to get one of these drinks, and you're drinking it, and it feels like, yeah, this is refreshing, and the way it's marketed, and the way it's designed, and you think it is, but actually... Uh, inside, it's not rehydrating you, it's dehydrating you because of the other chemicals in them. And so not everything that you drink is going to fix your dehydration. Think of uh, the, the drink that I think of is Fanta. If you look at that drink Fanta, it looks nice. It's orange. If you see it in a, in a, in a bottle, you go abroad in some countries in Africa and in the Caribbean, it's in like a nice uh, bottle and it's bright orange. It's, bright, it's even brighter orange than it is here. It's, I don't know what, what, what makes it brighter. But here is this thing that looks so nice. And if you drink it, you know, it's orange, so it must be healthy. It's like an orange. It's, you know, it's an orange drink. But... 
uh, praise God, I don't know what's in that thing, but, uh, and it's sweet. When you taste it, it tastes so sweet. But if you was to live on Fanta, it would ruin your health. And it would, uh, 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 the only way I can put it is that it would mash up your teeth. It would, just, it would do a madness on your, on your teeth. And so think about these two things now. Here you have this thing that looks nice, tastes sweet, but it's bad for your health and it's actually bad for your teeth. I want to tell you, some relationships are like that. Some relationships in your life, you're trying to make those relationships fix a dehydration problem. And so she looks sweet, just like the Fanta. But you know what's going to happen? She's not good for your health. And people are, uh, you, you, you thought you were thirsty, you've left God and you've gone after this. There are uh, guys, he looks nice, but he's going to mash up your life. And you better realize that there is this similarity there, that this psalm is so relevant to our lives because we're trying to fix our spiritual soul dehydration with things that only compound the problem. See, when the Lord is your shepherd, he leads you to still waters. That talks about safe waters. That's what it means. It means a place of rest, of calm, it, it, still waters, that word still, it, it almost gives us the picture that he's going to lead us to this place where you would just want to dwell. You just want to stay there and be refreshed and, and, and that your thirst is quenched. He doesn't lead us to dangerous waters. It's the still waters. See, before we start to look for other relationships, before we start to look out and say, you know what, I'm looking for a man, I'm looking for a woman, I'm looking for somebody that is going to uh, quench this dehydration. I want to tell you, you need to find the still waters. See, because you have to realize is that you need to find somebody uh, 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 that you realize I can have a relationship with you, but I'm not looking for you to actually quench this thirst of mine because I've already found the still waters that quenches this thirst, that is dealt with the dehydration of my soul. See, many are looking for still waters in relationships. Many are looking for somebody that will actually quench the dehydration of their soul. But you was made for God to have that relationship with God. And this is what is needed, is that before I actually look for some other relationships, I'm going to make the Lord my shepherd. I'm going to allow him first. Lead me to those still waters. Lead me to that place where you refresh my soul. And then I'm ready to uh, uh, undertake and go enter into other relationships. See, really what we're saying here is you've got to let Jesus lead you. You've got to let Jesus lead you. Uh, if you're a single person, let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus be the one. Let him be your shepherd. Don't run ahead of him. Don't, uh, as we spoke about, look, uh, 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 always looking over the fence and thinking everything else is greener. Allow him to lead you. Because if Jesus leads you into that relationship, you will find still waters in that relationship because he's leading you. If you're married right now, still, you've got to let Jesus lead your marriage. So many times people have, they've opened their ears to so many voices into their marriage. And the saddest thing is those marriages are the marriages where people are the most dehydrated, dehydrated, unfruitful, barren. And God is there saying, listen, let me be your shepherd. If you will allow me to lead this marriage, to lead you in this marriage, that you as a wife, you become what God would have you be, not what Cosmopolitan wants you to be, not what someone else wants you to be. As a man, that you would become what God wants you to be as a husband, as a father. I'm telling you, you will find still waters in that marriage when we will allow and say, you know what? The Lord, he's my shepherd. He's going to lead this marriage. See, let me, let me, let me kind of go a little bit deeper into this. David is writing a psalm. And so David, David comes from a dry place. And so when, when, when he's speaking about, uh, when, when he speaks about uh, waters and leading and all of these things, David understands what it is to live in a dry place. And so he understands the value of water and he's trying to invoke and he's saying that life can be like this 
life sometimes feels like we're living in a dry place. And so this is why, you know, people say life is hard. Life is hard. You know, in my generation, people would be like, life is hard and then you die. People in this generation now say the struggle is real. And every generation has their way of communicating that, you know what, life, sometimes it feels like a dry place. And David is saying, life is like that. Life is like living in a dry place and you need someone who's going to lead you to some still waters. See, the characteristic of, of, of a dry place is this, is that uh, when you live in a dry place, everything in your life is surrounded and dictated to wells. This is why when we read in the Bible, they speak about wells. Uh, and so they'll meet at the well and this is where we go to uh, at the well. And there's so many wells in the Bible when you read it. And if you wonder why, and uh, because this is, this is how it's needed. You, your life is surrounded and dictated by a well, meaning that if you're going to live uh, out in a, in a dry place, you've got to live near a well. If you're going to set up a house or whatever and there's no well there, you won't survive for long. If you're going to travel, you can't travel so far from one well unless you're going to be traveling towards another well. You cannot just go days and days and days away from a well. How are you going to live? And so the well is so important in Bible times and the well is so important when you're living in a, a dry atmosphere, a dry environment. And so life becomes limited to the well. Life is limited. You can only live and you can only go based upon the, the geographic uh, location of a well. The problem is this. Wells are susceptible to other elements. See, the well can dry up. When your life is surrounded by a well, if that well dries up, you, you're finished. You've got to go or do something else, but your life is limited to the well. Uh, in the Bible, it speaks about wells can be attacked. Your enemy can come and attack your well. And so uh, you're vulnerable to these attacks. We understand that you can have conflicts over a well. Someone can come and want the well that you have or don't want you to use the well. And so it, it, it comes with co uh, conflict. And so the, when you are dependent and limited to a well, it creates a vulnerability in your life. See, this is why... You should not make somebody your well. If you make a man or a woman your well, you are now limited in life. You will not, you will be unable to live the life that God made you to live because you are limited. You can only go where they want you to go and how they want you to go. You can only travel it, it, it affects everything in life and we see today where people have made somebody else their well see when that person dries up you're finished when that person uh, uh, is attacked meaning they go through a dark place you go for it. If that person, if someone is your well and they brought you to church and they become your well, we understand people bring us to church, they encourage us. But if they're your well, if the devil attacks them and they leave, you're going to leave. If someone is your well, I've seen many people go through uh, ups and downs and that's part of life. But you're going to have to make a decision that, you know what, you can't be my well. Uh, what did I say? I said that wells sometimes they have conflict where people are arguing over a well. You know, the most stupidest thing is when you see two women arguing over one guy. That makes no sense to me, that you're going to have beef and argue and call and text and fight and all of these things. I want to tell you straight up, you've made somebody your well. That's the problem. Most of the love songs that have uh, bled into our culture today are really people singing about well problems. That you've made someone your well and then something has happened to that well, then that affects the rest of your life. You cannot go on in life or uh, uh, you become bitter or you become uh, uh, all of these different problems. And so this is really a symptom is that mankind, what we've done is we realize that we're thirsty. We realize that we're dehydrated. We may not articulate it like that. There's something missing. And what we've gone and done is we've tried to fix that by making someone else a well for us. See, the psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He's saying that Jesus is the solution. 
I want to tell you today, sitting at home, wherever you're watching this, is that Jesus is the solution. Jesus will meet you at your well. That's where Jesus will meet you. The Bible says in John 4 that Jesus uh, met a woman at the well. And I, I, this story has so many applications to it that uh, almost I could do a whole series just on this woman's life is that Jesus meets a woman at the well and Jesus will meet you at your well. You may have made somebody your well. Your well. And as you're listening to this, you realise you made someone your well. That might not be a boyfriend or a girlfriend. It could be your spouse. Your spouse is not your well. They're your spouse. But I'm telling you, you still need the Lord to be your shepherd. You may, it could be a family member. It could be, uh, I don't know, a boss. Or whatever it is, you realise is I've made this my well. And Jesus is willing to still come and meet you at your well. But what Jesus will do is he'll meet you at your well, but he will not leave you at your well. Jesus is not going to leave you dependent upon your well. In John 4 verse 13, he meets the woman at this well, but he says this. Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water shall thirst again. Whoever drinks of this water shall thirst again. He's saying that this will not uh, uh, rehydrate you. This, this will not fix your dehydration of soul problems. He says, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Remember we read in Jeremiah where he said, I am the living water, I am a spring of water. And so Jesus is saying to this woman, listen, if you drink of this water, you're going to thirst again. But if you drink of what I give you, there's going to be this springing water inside of you, this fountain, this, this flow of water that's going to be keeping uh, uh, flowing out of your life. And what Jesus was doing is this. Jesus was telling this woman, if you allow me to lead you, you will no longer be dependent upon this well. You will no longer be dependent upon this well. What he's saying is that your life will no longer be limited to this well. You will no longer be chained to this well, limited to this well. Remember what we said, when, a well, when your life is surrounded by, uh, uh, when it goes around a well, that is it. You can't move anywhere, you can't go anywhere. Jesus is saying, if you receive me and you receive what I give, Jesus is saying to this woman, when I'm finished with you, you are no longer limited to this well. The shepherd leads us beyond the limits of our old wells. That is the word from God. That is the, that God doesn't want to give you more religion. What he wants to do is he wants to do something inside of you that is going to lead you and do a miracle inside of you that if you will accept him, he's going to lead you beyond the limits of your old wells. He's going to, what do I mean by the old wells? The old wells of um, insecurity and seeking for acceptance. That's one of the old wells that many people are living. They're limited by that. They're constantly seeking uh, acceptance, people pleasing. What does so and so think? What does this person think? How does, what will this person say? And they're constantly living, drinking, having to go back, limited by that well. Cannot go where God wants them to go because they're limited. Jesus is saying, if you drink from the water I give you, you will no longer be limited to that old well. There are old worlds of uh, uh, pride and seeking position. These are, uh, uh, we're seeking, I'm the best and look what I'm doing and look what I, we live in a culture that has to be liked and celebrated and people are bound by this, constantly checking their phone. How many people like the last photo? Is it doing well? Is it not doing well? How many people are watching that video? And we're, we're bound by these things and God is saying, listen, if you allow me to work inside of you, I'm going to put something inside of you that you will be free from these old wells, free from uh, our sensuality and our carnality. I want to tell you, this is what God wants to do. The shepherd wants to lead us to still waters so that we are no longer living under the limits of our old wells. See, when I drink from the water that he gives me, I become free. You will never be free until you are free from your wells, your old wells. See, uh, this is why 
Uh, I'm free now to be who God has made me to be in Christ. I'm free to be who God made me to be. God didn't make me to be you. And God didn't make you to be me. I'm not trying to make you into me. That's not my job. My job is to point you to Christ. My job is to tell you more about Jesus. My job is that you would become free from your old wells and your old shackles and stop trying to get everybody to like you and please everybody so that you can be who God made you to be in Christ. What that means is I'm now free to love you. I'm free to love you. I'm no longer being nice to you and being kind to you and saying things to you so that somehow you're going to think that I'm a nice person and you're going to, oh, so-and-so is nice, so I'll love me back. You may never love me. You may never like me. You may, don't care. That's your prerogative. But I'm free from your opinion of me because now I desire what God says. I'm free to love you, to be kind to you. So when you, even if somebody treats me bad, we are now free as Christians to say, we're going to love you. We're free to turn the other cheek. We're free not to return evil for evil. We are free to live holy. I'm no longer uh, trying to please the world, for the world to think that I'm something and I'm this and I'm that. Listen, there are some of you here, you're single and you, you feel like, oh, am I weird? I, I, I'm, I'm bound. I've got to have a relationship. I've got to have a relationship. I've got to have a relationship. I want to tell you right now. You are free from that. Yes, God can bless you. Yes, we pray God will bless you. You have relationship, family, marriage, children, all of the other things. But I want to tell you, you're free. You're no longer pushed and bound, even in marriage, that you can be free to just say, listen, I'm going to serve God. I'm going to love you and be the best I can for you and for this family and for our children, because this is what God designed me to be. See, are we drinking from these still waters? See, there's going to come a day when uh, we're going to pass from this life to the next life. That day is going to come before we know it. Just the other day, I felt like I was uh, in my 20s. Just the other day, it felt like I got saved and I was 22. And now, uh, 47. Time is flying. One day, I'm going to close my eyes and I will open them again and I will be with the Lord. But I want to tell you, even on that day, the same water that I drunk from, from the day I got saved, the same shepherd that led me to the still waters will lead me on even in eternity. Because in Revelations 21, sorry, 22 verse 1, at the end of it all, the last chapter in the Bible, he says, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. See, if you allow the Lord to be your shepherd. He will lead you to these still waters. Now, on earth, while you're alive, you will enjoy a, 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 a deep fulfilling, a refreshing, a rehydration of soul. But not only now, when you step into eternity, he will lead you all the way to those eternal living waters. Jesus said it to this woman. He said, if you drink of this, you'll thirst again. But if you drink of the waters I give, he says that you will not thirst again. And so let us make the Lord our shepherd this week so that we can lead us to these times of refreshing. You may feel dehydrated in life. You may feel like you're uh, losing energy. You may feel like you're confused. Do not know where to turn. Do not know what to do. You may feel like fainting, giving up. Maybe you feel that you're not throwing in the towel. Maybe you've even felt suicidal. I want to say to you right now, don't give up. Don't quit. Call on the Lord. Make him your shepherd and he will lead you beside those waters. And just like naturally, when you're dehydrated, if you'll drink water, you'll be rehydrated. Jesus Christ will rehydrate your soul. And all of that hopelessness and all of that depression and all of that, uh, uh, that weakness and you feel like giving up will change. And he will give you a new zest of life, a new zeal, a new joy, a new peace. This is what Jesus wants to do and he'll do it for you today. I pray that this message has blessed you, brought you closer to Jesus. God bless. If you just heard this message and you realize that 
you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to tell you that God wants to come into your life and he wants to save you right now. And so we're going to put a prayer up on the screen. And if you say this prayer from your heart, we're going to believe that God's going to save you, that he's going to hear that prayer. Now, it's not the words, it's not saying the words, but what it means is, is that you agree with the words and you're saying these words from your heart. And so if you follow along with me as I pray. Dear Lord Jesus, Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. I receive you as my Lord and Saviour. Help me to live for you the rest of my life. And in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, we really believe that God heard you and that he will save you. And we'd love to hear about it. And so underneath this video, there is a link and uh, let us know so that we can get some resources over to you. I wanna say to everybody, we really do appreciate you joining with us. And if you wanna stay up to date and connected with what we're doing, you can subscribe to our channel. You can keep visiting our video. We pray that you're blessed, amen.